You know, throughout the past few days, we've seen a few different Montreal Canadiens topics bring themselves up in the media, published on different articles, and spoken about by the fans. And because none of these were actually, like, huge in my opinion, just like individual updates on certain things, I was like, you know, let's not make a video about it yet, but hey, it's October 24th and all of a sudden we have all these stories that have combined together to form one very attractive package as a video, so... This video here is going to be a primary Montreal Canadiens update. We're going to be talking about mostly some of the more important guys on the team, as well as an important concept on the team as well. Let's start things off over on Jesperi Kotkaniemi. Take a look at this. This is HabsEyesOnThePrize.com, an article written by Patrick Bexwell. The title is What to Expect from Jesperi Kotkaniemi's Liga Stint. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we covered this in a few videos ago. Jesperi Kotkaniemi, 2018 third overall pick, Montreal Canadiens cult player at the moment. He indeed has gone over to Finland, and he will be starting off the Finnish Liga season playing over there. And his first game's actually today. It's on Saturday. I'm recording this video, unfortunately, at Friday night, October 23rd. So the game hasn't happened yet. Who knows if he gets a hat trick or whatever? I don't really know. Obviously, I'd have to be looking into the future to know, but... This article over here goes over a few opinions from Finnish journalists and Finnish hockey people as to what exactly Kotkaniemi should be able to do during his time in Finland. Take a look at this. This is an opinion from Pekka Jalonen, a journalist at the Italeti. I apologize for butchering that name right now. Kotkaniemi should dominate games up to a certain level since the Finnish league is even worse than it was last year. Look at Vitaly Abramov, Ottawa Senators prospect. Two games, four goals, and he is just a prospect. Alexei Sarala has six games and six goals. And he only has nine NHL games under his belt, and he doesn't have a contract for next season. Petri Contiola has 10 points in seven games, and he wasn't good enough to play for Jokeret. They didn't offer him a contract, and he was a healthy scratch during the playoffs last spring. This is what Mika Arpanen of Finn Prospect says. Obviously, it's difficult to say how fast Kotkaniemi would be able to produce at his own rate, quote-unquote, but I think it would be completely reasonable to expect him to be the Asat's clear-cut number one center and to be at least, or at least near, the point-per-game mark. I'd be very surprised if he didn't get to run the power play unit. Then we also had Joke Nevalainen, who had a similar sentiment. Hey, confidence, power play opportunities, all this stuff is going to be given to Jesperi Kotkaniemi during his time in Finland. And it all starts today, or at least I think it should have already gone up by now. I'm not really too sure on uh, the conversions over there, because this video will be uploaded at 10 a.m. PST, October 24th, so that will be 1 p.m. Montreal time. Who knows if the game is already going to be done. It's going to be like 9 p.m. in Finland, I believe, when this video is uploaded, so he'll probably have already played a game, who knows what he does, but that is indeed something to look forward to. We have ourselves a few months worth of Jesperi Kotkaniemi Finnish Liga action, and again, we said this in the previous video, but this guy has been absolutely great. He was good in the AHL, he came back to the NHL in the postseason, he was great, and then he's going over to Finland, which is a lower level of hockey than the AHL, so we'll see how he does there. Next up, though, it's another guy that we've spoken about before. We're talking about Alexander Romanov because Richard Labbe posted an article over on La Presse talking about how his agent said, Europe is absolutely not an option here for Alexander Romanov. The plan is for him to go to the NHL, fly back to Montreal as soon as possible, and we will see what happens there. The article linked talks about how Alexander Romanov wants to play for the Canadians. Take a look at this. This is according to the agent Dan Milstein, translated from French because La Presse is a French media outlet, into English via the Google machine. Aside from the players who grew up playing with their local clubs and played there at very young ages, like the guys in Finland, for example, Jesper Kotkaniemi, very good example of that, European teams do not want NHL players who are going to come and skate with them for just a few weeks. They want players who are going to be there all season, and that's understandable. So it looks like Romanov is just going to use this as more fuel to the fire. The fire that burns of his desire and passion towards playing in the NHL, and the overall commitment he has towards playing in Montreal. Furthermore, we had ourselves an interesting little quote here mentioned on Twitter by John Liu. This is what Claude Julien spoke about when it comes to Alexander Romanov. Romanov is in the mix to play on the right side, among other left-handed defensemen like Mete, Edmondson, and possibly Kulak, 
it's a very strong endorsement of the rookie. In French, Claude Julien said he would be surprised if Romanov did not start the season with the big club. So right away, I think just the way that Claude Julien is talking about Romanov, the way Marc Bergevin has been talking about Romanov over the past few weeks and the past few months, really, going back to his previous World Juniors where he was great, we're getting ourselves a lot more confirmation, at least, that Romanov is most likely going to actually make the team and be given a role to actually make a significant impact. It's interesting because he might even be played on the right side. We've spoken a ton before about how, okay, the right side, you have yourselves Weber, Petrie, and then whoever else you want to toss in there. Maybe it's Alexander Romanov who goes from a lefty over to the right side playing as a lefty, and we'll see how things go forward from there. But obviously, it's just very exciting to see Romanov and take a look at what he is going to be able to do as things go forward to start off his NHL career. And finally though, speaking about the lines, we had ourselves a very interesting piece posted over here onto La Presse again. Take a look at this, this is an article here. It was posted onto Reddit, so I'll leave a link both to the article itself and Reddit, because on Reddit they did a little bit of a translation of the more important points. Pretty much the title of the article is this, we need to stop trying to identify a first line. There are a whole bunch of Claude Julien quotes on here, so we'll read some of them. We need to stop trying to identify the Canadian lines by numbers. For some, it sometimes borders on an obsession. Who plays on the first line left wing? Is Deneau a third line center? Has Tatar really been transferred to the third line? The questions never end. With such depth, the Canadians will be able to count on three good lines and a luxury fourth line capable of playing 13, 14 minutes per game. With the limited number of quality players on the right side last year, the lines were more easily identifiable. After Gallagher, there was a quality winger of interesting size, Yoel Armia, but whose best goal production in a season before last year was 13. He then talks about Jordan Wheel, etc., and then mentions how Toffoli and Anderson changes this. Because these two guys are very legit right-wing players that could even be top six caliber on some teams. So, with these guys being diversified on different lines, the fact that you have Gallagher, Anderson, Toffoli as three very serviceable right-wingers, you have three serviceable centers in Kotkaniemi, Suzuki, Druan, and on the left side you have Druan, you have Tatar, etc. This is a team that doesn't really need the labels of a first, second, or a third line. They're going to roll them out equally, they're going to give them all equal opportunity, and for the most part, that's kind of what you would want to see, because at the end of the day, we saw Philippe Deneau's comments earlier in the year where he spoke about how he doesn't feel like he should be defined as a third-line center because he thinks that he has a lot more to give offensively in a top-two center role, so just giving the reins equally to each of these lines should be, in my opinion at least, the best developmental tool for not only Suzuki and Kakanyemi, but for the chemistry of guys like Anderson and whichever center he's paired up with, and Toffoli too. Have that chemistry between Druan and, I don't know, Toffoli on what would be called a second line, but play them as much as you would play that Deneau Tatar Gallagher line. There certainly are a lot of options because the Habs are so deep now. And with all these other guys here, with the Kotkaniemi improvements, with the Romanov on the defensive end stabilizing things out with some rough, tough play, I'm very much looking forward to these Canadian games coming up in 2020-2021. And I know everybody watching this video definitely is too. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about the Montreal Canadiens lineup going forward in the next season. Talk to me what you think about Jesperi Kotkaniemi and what we can expect out of him after his return from Finland. Furthermore, Alexander Romanov is a guy who is hungry. He really wants to play hockey, and it looks like Montreal is going to give him the opportunity to absolutely feast on that hunger that he has. And finally, when it comes to the lines, what are your thoughts on what was said over here by Claude Julien? Do you agree that there should be an equal distribution of lines because a lot of these lines are just pretty gosh darn equal? And when you're comparing the centers and the right wingers especially, there shouldn't really be a hierarchy of who's better, who's worse, or whatever, and you use that to dictate the playing time accordingly. For me, I personally do agree with this idea that there should not be some line one, line two, line three, whatever. It's just, hey, they're all good lines, so we'll play them like that. But talk to me in the comments what you think about this idea as a whole. Furthermore, I hope you enjoyed this video of Ashros 99. And bye. <laughs>